Thanksgiving vlog, holiday dinner vlog, holiday meal vlog, whatever you want to call it. It is our Thanksgiving, but it's going to be posting after Thanksgiving. So you're seeing this after Thanksgiving. So um, this will be basically the same thing we have for Christmas as well. So I thought I would just show you. These are all going to be, okay, not for my family, but for me, will be grain-free, gluten-free, only keto in the sense that it's all grain-free and gluten-free and sugar-free, which is where or how I my doctor has asked me to eat. So I chose the keto diet because it was the easiest to follow for me and the easiest to find recipes readily and for. So um, I'm not creative in the kitchen when it comes to creating my own recipes. I follow other people's recipe. So in this vlog, you're going to see me making um, gluten-free. This is uh, nomnom.com's gluten-free paleo and keto cinnamon rolls. I've been waiting to make those forever. So for rolls for me, my family's going to have those right there, which are the Hawaiian king rolls. Um, <laughs> for me, I will be having fluffy keto buns, low-carb, gluten-free, dairy-free. This is by the Sugar-Free Londoner. And highfalutin, low-carb. He put out a recipe for cornbread to make a cornbread stuffing or dressing as he calls it. And um, I will leave the link to his video below. I am just using his basic cornbread recipe to make my own stuffing. I'm kind of pulling together two or three different recipes that I've watched and seen and found over the last month or so, and I'm just gonna experiment. It may work, it may not. But I'm gonna be making that with chicken stock and this. This is chicken salt, this is vegan chicken salt. This stuff is phenomenal. I'll be using bone broth and um, the kettle and fire bone broth and spices. No meat will be in mine, it will simply be um, garlic, excuse me, celery, onions, you know, the normal stuff. And because I don't like chunks of that, we're gonna do it in a special way. Um, this is for my dinner tonight, low carb pizza. <laughs> Um, we're also going to make the Keto Connects Cauliflower Mac and Cheese. I will also leave for you, if you are a pumpkin pie person, I am not, I will leave for you a recipe for a single serve pumpkin pie that looked really good. It's just not something I really love. I'll be making green beans with bacon, southern thing, I'll cook them to death. So if you like crispy green beans, these, these are not for you. I will cook them until they literally shrivel up and turn dark green, buttery, bacony deliciousness. Seriously. Um, if you like potatoes in there, you can replace that with parsnips or um, a different vegetable like that. I, I'm just not, I don't need to do all that. Um, and I will be making a mashed cauliflower, super simple, quick, easy. It's five minutes, literally. Well, it's 10 minutes in the microwave to cook it and like five minutes to make the mashed cauliflower. Um, maybe if not, I'll just put the recipe down in the description box. Super easy. Like really. Um, and I think that's all. Uh, of course I'll be making stuffing for my family, which, oh, it's not there. I moved it. Stovetop stuffing. That's what they like. So that's what I'm going to give them. They asked for that. Why would I not give it to them? So that's what they're going to have. So we're going to start off brining the turkey, which I've started back here. It's just my first time to brine a turkey. I'm going to brine it in a bag in the refrigerator and I'm gonna bake it tomorrow. I will drain off the brine um, and then reseal up the bag and cook it in the bag to keep it nice and moist, but I don't want it too salty and so I don't wanna cook it in the brine. And um, there you go, that's everything. All right, let's get started. So this is chicken stock in here, just plain old chicken stock. I'm gonna put in there a couple tablespoons of garlic. This is uh, about a half a cup of coarse sea salt. Uh, kosher salt, that's what I prefer. Some rosemary, I'll put a couple tablespoons of rosemary, couple tablespoons, uh, that's ground sage, so about a tablespoon of ground sage, and onion powder, you could put a whole onion in here, and then I'm gonna put in about mm, a quart or two of water. Whatever it fills up to about right here in this pan, and I'm gonna bring it up to a boil to dissolve the salt and get the everything to meld together, and then I'm gonna let it completely cool, 
completely cool and then I will put it in the brining bag with the up turkey this is from butcher box um, this is I'm very excited to try this turkey but it is from butcher box and it is defrosted and I put it in the refrigerator about five days ago so um, it's good to go I'm gonna take everything you know clean it up take everything out of it really you don't need to see that and if that's something you need to know how to do I'm sure there are many videos on YouTube Honestly, it makes me gag. It makes me sick to do it. So I just, I don't want to show that to you. <laughs> it's not something I'm comfortable with. And then I will put the turkey in the bag, in the brine, and I will show you that. Okay, here we go. We are going to start making the nomnom.com cinnamon rolls. Right here, I'm preparing the yeast. So make sure your temperatures are correct for your water and make sure that you don't overheat your yeast water, otherwise you will kill the yeast. Now we're gonna add everything to the bowl, the dry ingredients, mix it all up. It's super simple, super easy. Now here are the wet ingredients, a little bit of butter. There's the yeast, you see it's nice and bubbly and foamy. If it's not, throw it out, start over. Here are the wet ingredients, our eggs made a mess. There we go, adding the yeast to the eggs. Now the wet to the dry and mix it thoroughly with your mixer. The dough is going to be wet. Allow it to sit for a little while and then you can roll it out. I was impatient so I put mine in ball form in the cupcake tin there. It worked out pretty well. Now I'm making the cinnamon mixture, putting it in, and I'll swirl it around. If you had rolled yours out, you would put your cinnamon mixture on top and then roll them up. I will be doing that next time, although this method, they came out great. So I recommend this if you don't want to take the time to roll them out. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Don't mind this. Okay, I just went for a run, but it's time for some cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to turn the camera down. We're going to make the frosting very quickly, super easy. And um, I'm going to show you the cinnamon rolls after they've rested overnight. You guys, spoiler, they're delicious. And um, then we'll frost one, warm one up, frost it, and have it for breakfast. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And then I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to clean my kitchen and my house. And then I'm going to start the stuffing and the macaroni and the cauliflower mac and cheese. And um, then we'll put the turkey in and get this meal going. All right, I'll see you in one second um, face to face again. Well, I'll probably see you when I try the. My battery is flashing, but you can see, look at them. Now, like I said, I did mine a little differently. The dough did firm up. I could have rolled them. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep that in mind for next time. I may roll them, but I kind of like this. It's very much like a cake texture, and I will show that to you once I change my batteries and refrost them. I like to warm up the butter a little bit. It just makes it easier, but you don't have to do that. And sifting the allulose would have prevented the lumps in there. You really should sift, but sometimes it's a pain for me. Okay, so I just microwaved this. Oh, it's so nice. Next time I probably won't cook mine as long as uh, the direction stated. Uh, she cooks very high altitude, and you know, everybody's oven is different. So yeah, I'm gonna cook mine a little bit less, and I may cook it on convection next time. Uh, just to try different things, but this recipe is excellent. Okay. Oh my goodness. Extra frosting, please, because that's my favorite part. Sorry about that. My uh, stand just decided to be a problem. All right, not my stand, what tri tripod. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's hot. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, go make this. It's, it really is very easy. Um, it's super easy. I used inulin for the sweetener to get the yeast to bloom. You can use maple syrup. It eats the carbs, eat the uh, yeast eat the carbs out of it. So you don't really have to worry. Okay, one second. Okay, I know I'm a mess at life. <laughs> I went for a run. I needed a cinnamon roll. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Even if you aren't keto, this is a delicious recipe. Fantastic. Next time I will definitely roll the dough. Definitely cook it on um, convection. And um, I will make these again and again and again and again. This is the recipe from going forward that I will always use. And uh, you can make a big batch ahead of time. <laughs> a big batch ahead of time and take it with you. Oh my goodness. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you in a second uh, with the house clean and me clean. <laughs> okay, so it's time to prep some vegetables. So uh, I'm going to be cooking over the next several hours. I'll be cooking the fluffy keto buns from uh, Sugar Free Blend Dinner. We're gonna make the cauliflower mac and cheese by uh, Keto Connect. And then the high pollutant, low carb, um, just his basic cornbread for his stuffing because I'm just gonna sort of wing it and make my own. So what we're gonna do right now, because my dishwasher is empty and it is 12 o'clock, we wanna eat around five. So I'll probably put the turkey in around one, one thirty, two o'clock, around in there, my phone's gonna ding. And uh, text messages, Black Friday things, it's just, they're just, they're coming in left and right. So we're gonna hear it ding. Um, so I'm gonna prepare the vegetables right now. I'm gonna start with the cauliflower, dice this all up for the cauliflower mac and cheese, and for the stuffing. Now, I don't like chunks of celery or onion in anything, uh, be it soups, salads, oh, salads maybe. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. I just don't like it in anything hot, anything cooked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stalk of celery and a couple, like a quarter of an onion and whiz it up in the food processor and that will be part of my aromatics for the stuffing. And the seasonings I'm gonna use are typical plus one. So we're gonna use sage, rosemary, I have time over there. I may not put time in. I'm gonna Google just the typical seasonings for a, stu a rest for a stuffing, and I will use those. Plus, this is chicken salt. Um, I have. I didn't know which kind of bone broth I was gonna like. Okay, so I picked up two different ones. This is the Kettle and Fire one, and this is Pacific Foods bone broth, um, unsalted. Yeah. So I'm gonna try this one. If it's too strong for me, if it's too overwhelming, I'll try this one. If both of them are too strong, I'll use chicken broth. Um, I don't want it to have a gamey taste to it, which I find bone broths a little strong for me. So we're gonna see, but that's what's recommended for use in the keto gravies and keto um, stuffings because they have more flavor to them, whereas keto ingredients for breads tend to be a little bland. So that's what was recommended. Um, also, this is what we're gonna use to make the gravy with. It's gonna be a very simple gravy. Some of the drippings, droppings, drippings, not droppings, no, we don't want the droppings. <laughs> Some of the drippings from the turkey, um, this uh, butter, and uh, some xanthan gum to thicken it up. If you would like, you could use cream, heavy whipping cream, but I, I don't want to use heavy whipping cream. I'd rather use the xanthan gum. You could use arrowroot powder. Um, you could use, if you can have cornstarch, you could just use cornstarch. Make a slurry first and put it in there. It's easy to use. Or you could do a traditional roux if you are not gluten-free. If you're not keto, you can just do a traditional roux of uh, flour and butter and uh, then add your drippings and a little stock and you know whatever else you may want. If you want a super duper duper chickeny flavor, you could also add the chicken salt in there. There you go. Add the giblets if that's something you do. You do you. This is just a simple basic turkey gravy I'm gonna be making. My family loves the McCormick turkey gravy. They love that. I did too in years past, but um, I didn't buy that this year, so nothing I can do about that. All right, so I'm gonna dice up the cauliflower. It says to put it in tiny little pieces and cook it in a pan. So we're gonna get going on that. I'm gonna shred up the um, onions and celery, and then we're gonna go right into making the low-carb cornbread and the rolls. So that's really all I'm gonna need to do while all of that is baking and cooking because it's at a higher temperature than the turkey. 
and then once that comes out we'll lower the temperature and we'll put the turkey in and um, the green beans got to get the green beans going they need to come in pretty soon I usually cook them for five six hours I'm a southern girl we like all of the nutrients cooked out of our vegetables <laughs> slow low caramelized deliciousness oh my goodness I love slow cooked green beans I love them Okay, now it's time to trim up the cauliflower. We're gonna cut the core out of it and then we're just gonna break it up into tiny little bite-sized pieces. Keto Connect says to put it in these tiny pieces to give you more of the texture of pasta. Honestly, I didn't find it necessary. Uh, next time I will just cut it up normally and next time I will likely use frozen cauliflower for ease. My baby's eating their vegetables. They're such good puppers. Them's eat their vegetables. I always skip them. Oh, <laughs> what was that, Eddie? Easy girl, easy, easy, good girl. Little dog, easy, easy. That wasn't easy, easy. That's my boy. Yes, a good girl. Okay, one more bite, because you know, too much cauliflower makes Addie a little stinky. <laughs> you don't like cauliflower. You don't like it. You don't believe me. It took me 10 minutes to cut up that cauliflower. That's why I buy frozen. <laughs> Okay, so I had to add butter to mine and it's gotten a little dark, which I actually don't mind uh, because I actually did not defrost the bacon. <laughs> so what I have in here is pre-cooked bacon and um, there you go. But again, mine got a little dark. You don't have to do that with yours, but I put butter in here just to kind of give it some oil, so to speak, since I didn't have any bacon fat. And then here's the beginning. So the cheese sauce, super simple. It's butter, uh, cream, and cheese. Super duper simple, a little salt and pepper. And uh, that is getting ready for my green beans, which I'm gonna go start right now. Okay, so here are the green beans. It's just the Costco frozen green beans. Normally I use Del Monte canned green beans or even the French style from HEB, whatever. But this is what I had this year. I prefer to buy frozen vegetables because they last in the freezer if I don't get to them fast enough. So this is coming quite nicely. Uh, so that's about, I don't know, six handfuls of green beans and then the bacon is on top. Now, that's pre-cooked bacon because same story as here. You would saute your bacon to start off and get it nice and crispy. I prefer it crispy. Some people just throw it all in there at once, but I like to get it all crispy and then put in some water and then the green beans. Um, but uh, just a couple cups of water. If you want it extra flavorful, you could uh, certainly add chicken stock but or chicken broth or a bouillon cube or whatever it is you'd like to do. A lot of people put chicken stock. I prefer salt, pepper, bacon, and water, and the green beans. That's what I grew up with. And if you're extra lucky, you could put some red peeled new potatoes in there. Oh, about 30, 40 minutes before you're ready to serve. Drop them in there, oh, that's heaven. I forgot to say on the green beans, bring them up to a bubble and reduce to a simmer, cover them up and let them go. Watch the liquid. If you run out of liquid, pour in some more water. You could also throw in a couple tablespoons of butter, which I will definitely be doing. I may do three or four tablespoons of butter. It's what makes them delicious. So now we're starting the cauliflower mac and cheese. The sauce is super easy, super duper easy. It's just cream, butter, little cheese. I used a little too much cheese, so remember to pay attention to the portions on that. I'll leave the recipe linked for you in the description box. This, since this day has become my go-to, there we are pouring the cauliflower and bacon mixture into the, the ramekin with the cheese. We're gonna sprinkle a little extra cheese on top with some pork rinds. Don't skip on the pork rinds. I don't like pork rinds, but um, they really add a little something to it. Replace the breadcrumbs on this. 
very, very delicious in the oven it goes. And uh, yeah, make it. There it is, look at it. Oh my goodness, bubbly deliciousness. Look at that. Does that not make your mouth water? I have made it since Thanksgiving. I think I've made it twice now, so good. Now we're making the cornbread stuffing or dressing from Highfalutin Low Carb. I will leave the video down below. Very easy to add everything together. Make sure you sift, it is important. There's the wet into the dry, mix it all up and put it into a hot buttered pan. I don't have a cast iron skillet, so I just used my granite pan. It is oven safe, and there it goes into the oven. Now we're going to make the dinner rolls. Seriously, this couldn't be any easier if your dough's a little wet after you've mixed it together. Just let it sit for a few minutes for the psyllium husk powder to absorb the liquid. Four portions, roll it out, roll it up in your hands, put some knife marks across the top to give it that little, these are delicious. Seriously, I'll show them to you in just a second. So good, there is the completed cornbread. Now we're gonna cut it up and put it in the pot. This made a whole bunch. I actually saved this for later on because it made so much. Look at that texture, beautiful. I'll mention this again in a minute. I'm gonna skip the pork rinds in the recipe next time. He says not to use this as regular cornbread. Quite frankly, I liked it enough to use it as regular cornbread. I thought it was delicious. Now let's get that turkey into the oven. Rob is holding the bag for me. There goes the turkey. I've just poured out the brine. She's all ready to go. Now we're gonna slather her with butter and herbs. A Little bit of sage and butter and rosemary in there. All right, in the oven she goes at 325 for, uh, you do your own calculations. Based on weight. Based on weight, so there we go. Okay, there are the rolls I just made. Uh, I know there's been a lot of voiceover, I apologize. We got football on in the house. <laughs> so, and the NFL is very particular about copyright. So, there we go. So, there are the four rolls, and they look really good. Here is the inside of those rolls. You guys, I'm gonna leave this recipe link for you. This is a fabulous recipe. Um, she has them just tweaked a little bit for hamburger buns, for bread and things like that. But these were really simple and really, they're very good. The casserole is already on the table. I'm working on my table setting. There's only three of us this year, so we're going to go ahead and eat in here. I was going to set the big table, but nope. We'll put those on later uh, when the turkey's done. Same with that. I'll just reheat it quickly in the oven. Um, surprisingly, my green beans are done, and then there is the mixture waiting for the stuffing. Um, when the bird's about, I don't know, an hour away from being done, I'll start the stuffing and I'll make the family stuffing and the gravy, but um, they're done. Don't they look delicious? Oh. So everything will just get a quick heat up um, later. Every year I have to work on my timing. Every year I have to work on it drives me crazy because it'll be ready, like my sides will be ready before my turkey is ready, so next year I'm gonna perfect the sides being ready. The problem is I'm only one person, and so I have to kind of make things a little earlier, but then I make them too early. So, but these green beans did cook a lot faster than the ones I normally cook, and I'm cooking half as much as I normally cook, so there you go. Okay, I will show you probably when we're making the gravy and the stuffing. And like I told you, I'm just sort of playing with the stuffing, so I can't guarantee it's gonna be anything worth eating. That stuff's pretty good. The, the pan, he says it's not made for cornbread, it's just made to be the stuffing, but it's pretty good. I don't like the pork rinds in it. I would probably skip those next time. Okay, I like to whiz up in my prod food processor the celery and onion because I don't like chunks of it. Makes it nice and smooth. All the flavor without the chunk. Okay, the turkey is done. She is now just browning. 
and I'm about to start the stuffing mix. So all I'm gonna do is saute that onions and celery with butter. I'm just gonna saute that in there and let it uh, sort of develop its flavors. Then I will pour in some chicken stock. Actually, I'll put the seasonings in here with this while it's sauteing so that it uh, it gets the seasoning in there. Just a little sage. That's all I'm gonna put in there is sage and um, uh, chicken salt. That's all that's going in there. Sage and chicken salt. And uh, then, that's the chicken stock. I accidentally poured it in, forgetting I needed to do this step. So I'll put that in there. And then we'll put some stuffing in there and we'll pour this over it and we'll stick it in the oven for a couple of minutes. And this is cooking right here, but here it is. Yeah, I've got too much. I'm just gonna freeze it for later. So, like I said, here's the chicken salt. I don't know if it focused. And um, sage. So that's what we're gonna put in there. And we will be good to go. And then all I have left to do is make the gravy. And that should be fairly simple, and I will show you that once we get there finally smells like Thanksgiving in here. So I put a quarter teaspoon of sage and a half a teaspoon of the chicken salt in there. And I'm just letting it, uh, you don't need salt when you use the chicken salt. So <laughs> there you go, you can put pepper in there. I just don't find it necessary for me. So there we go. I'm gonna let that go for another second or two. Then I'm gonna put the stock in it. Then I'm gonna put um, handfuls of the stuffing mix in there until it is absorbed. So, okay, now why the chicken salt? Because it tastes like this. <laughs> it gives it that taste. If you, if you like stovetop stuffing, then you know what I'm talking about. It gives it that salty, chickeny taste. So, it's excellent for making ramen, uh, keto ramens, and things like that. It's such, it's, so, it's delicious. I absolutely love it. It can lend itself a little salty, so you have to keep that in mind. But uh, I use it chicken and dumplings, chicken pot pie, chicken and keto rice. It is, it's, uh, it's my favorite. I love it. And some of my friends have told me they like it on their burgers. So there you go. There we go. Let that come up to a bubble. Now let me make the family, the traditional. I know some of you are rolling your eyes. That's what my family likes. All right, so I'm just gonna drop it by handfuls in here until I think I, I have enough. Ouch, just burned myself, the pan got. I completely forgot to show the final clip of the stuffing. So there it is on the right there. It was actually quite delicious. Um, I just used the chicken broth and put the stuffing in until it felt like it had absorbed enough liquid and baked it in the oven just for a little bit. Very, very good. Again, next time I will skip the pork rinds. Look at that beautiful bird. There she is. She's all done. I would like her to be a little more brown, but uh, I don't have time. <laughs> so she's going to be just fine the way she is. We don't really eat the skin anyway. So I'm gonna completely remove the bag. You see all that yumminess in there? It's gonna come out and I'm gonna make the gravy with that and some bone broth. Okay, there we go. That's got turkey drippings, um, about half a box of chicken bone broth, a couple of tablespoons of butter. We're gonna let it come up to a bubble and then put in some xanthan gum, about a half a teaspoon, and uh, call it a day and the gravy will be done. Here's the gravy complete. You can see it has thickened and changed color a little bit. You could go up to a teaspoon of the xanthan gum, or you could thicken it with heavy whipping cream, or you could thicken it with arrowroot powder, whatever you choose. All right, there we go. Um, the rolls are in the oven. We've carved the turkey, and uh, everything's there. We're ready to eat. So thank you so, so much for joining me in this Thanksgiving vlog. We're gonna sit down and have our dinner and uh, we'll probably have the exact same dinner for Christmas, uh, sans turkey, we will add a ham. So that'll really be about it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe before you go and we will see you next time. Vlogmas starts next. Bye.